Hey everyone, this is Dave DeBow with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Today, zooming in all the way from beautiful Vermont, we've got Aaron Fragnito. How are you doing today, Aaron? Doing great, Dave. How's your day treating you? You know what? No complaints. A little bit, a little bit smoky up here and usually Brit- beautiful British Columbia, but at the time that we're recording this, we're in the midst of fire season, so we got a crap ton of smoke wow. around, which is kind of no fun, but is what it is. So hopefully you guys don't have any of that. Yeah, we're getting a lot of rain over here. So we're getting all that rain you need. I guess. Push some of it over here. That'll be great. But anyhow, like so Aaron is a very accomplished real estate entrepreneur and a syndicator. And he does a lot of education with his prospective investors around how they can use their um, IRAs for investing in real estate investing. So yeah, Aaron, we'll talk a little bit about everything, but I'd like to kind of focus on that because that's that's something that I think is of interest to a lot of people. We've got a lot of listeners in the States. We've got a lot of listeners in Canada. Up here in Canada, you guys, uh, IRA is the, the equivalent of what we call RRSPs, same idea, registered mm-hmm. funds. Uh, mm-hmm. that, you know, the government says we can put aside tax deferred uh, yeah. to save up for our retirement. So Aaron, I believe you're going to be talking about how to wrestle control of those investments from your financial planner who's got them stuck in mutual funds and God knows what other kind of crap and actually start making some money with it. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And your financial planner may tell you, no, you can't self-direct your IRA. It's funny. I, I've had many Do, people- Do those American me. financial planners pull that dirty <laughs> trick too? I can't. Listen, it's like, hey, can, you know, you go up to your financial planner, hey, can I take all my business away from you? Of course, you'd be like, no, you can't do that. That's a bad financial decision. You it's know? illegal. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give your investments to someone else. That's a bad financial decision. No, well, of course, you know, so you can self-direct your IRA. Uh, there are absolutely uh, limitations to what you can invest in. And there's a process to doing it the right way. But if you do it the right way and work with a, a licensed IRA custodian who's going to guide you in the process, it's really quite simple and really only a few hundred bucks as well. It's pretty affordable, at least in, in America here. So, um, you know, it's, but for the first step is you select an IRA custodian and oh, there's just sorry, sorry to bump, jump in there, Aaron, but let, let's I just kind of like to step back and let's take the 30,000 foot yeah. perspective on this. Okay. So you as the deal maker, you as the person wanting to get people's IRA funds, what's the big benefit to you for bringing investors on board this way? Sure. So we buy apartment buildings and we buy uh, short-term rental properties, right? And these types of real estate are in high demand markets. They're professionally managed. So they're good long-term investments for individuals and and, uh, people like real estate. It produces cash flow and grows in value over time if you manage it, right? Going in the right markets, really. Um, So um, so the idea is that uh, we will have individuals take some of their IRA or solo 401k, not all of it, some of it, and diversify into real estate. Uh, I'm not of the opinion you should be 100% invested in the stock market. That's not diversification, in my opinion. Diversification is truly investing a third, perhaps, of your IRA or solo 401k and into brick and mortar, professionally managed real estate, which is a real estate syndicate. Okay, mm-hmm. And a real estate syndicate is when you pool capital together and buy a larger building. So that way, someone can take, say, $30,000 in their IRA, put it into a real estate syndicate and get in on like a $5 million, $10 million building. That's going to be a a stronger asset to be in rather than some flimsy two family or something like that, which is, you know, where $30,000 might might get you. So the idea is, you know, you're working with professionals, you're getting into larger buildings. um, And, uh, you know, there are rules to using your IRA, but uh, we'll kind of go over that in this podcast. Right. So from your perspective and from our perspective, if we are the active partner, if we're the capital raiser, the -hmm. big benefit to this is a lot of people have a crap ton of money in their IRAs and 401ks. Oh, this not a trillion, trillion. It's trillion. like three trillion is in IRAs. And I think one to 3% of them are self-directed. So if you're a guy like me out there raising capital, putting real estate deals together day in and day out, you know, you get to know people with the IRAs because most of the time IRAs are making four to 6%. And if you're if a good real estate operator, you can blow it out of the water. You know? Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. And then here's the other big benefit. 
you know, it's it's a little bit more challenging to find people with thirty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars in liquid cash. Mm-hmm. There's a lot mm-hmm. more of them that have that that money tied up in their IRA, right? Yeah, or, yeah. And I don't know about you, but, but my checking account, liquid cash, I kind of hold more value to that than my IRA money. It's like, yeah, you know, it's it's even future I'm money, right? It's kind of right. pay money kind of thing, right? Even yeah. I'm guilty, and I'm a money guy of being like nonchalant about my IRA, you know. Wow, that's another fantastic idea. Hold on to that thought for a sec. We'll be right back. Now, are you a real estate investor who's run out of cash or credit to grow your portfolio? Are you looking to grow your portfolio using other people's money and raising capital? Well, I want to show you how to raise six figures or more in six weeks or less at my upcoming Investor Attraction Workshop. You can get your ticket and find out all about it at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. We're going to spend a full day taking a deep dive into this roadmap that I've used to raise millions for my deals, and I've helped other people just like you cumulatively raise hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals as well. So again, you can check that out at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. And as a loyal listener to the podcast, you'll get 50% off your ticket when you use the discount code PODCAST. That's right, discount code PODCAST at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. See you at the next workshop. Yeah, so so again, it's... a couple of huge benefits from our point of view as the capital raisers. A, there's a ton of that money. Like you said, $3 trillion, only 1% or 2% of it's actually self-directed. That means mm-hmm. there, there's a huge untapped market there. Second mm-hmm. thing is people, your experience, if I'm understanding you, is people are less uptight about their IRA money than they might be about liquid cash or home equity well, I, or some other I, side of I wouldn't say less up to, it's so, so important that your nest egg is protected properly. Yeah. I would say most people with IRAs are not saying, I need to double my IRA overnight. You know, I need to make a killing on this. Most was okay. If I can make a 10% cash on cash return year over year in a well-managed, good asset that I know people need a roof over their head and people like living in North Jersey, you know, it's really not going anywhere. So at the end of the day, um, that's what people are looking for with their IRAs, you know, and when I when I work with perhaps more aggressive investors that have cash they want to move, they'll say I need to make twenty five percent return on this this year. And I'll say, listen, that that's hard. You know, I can't promise you that, and um, you're going to have to go elsewhere for that. So that's the idea. You know, it's just as important the capital, but um, the demand for the returns seem to be a little softer on the consumer. And side. do you, Aaron, do you find as well that people are not as concerned about getting that monthly cash flow check if it's in their IRA that it it doesn't you know it can be quarterly payments or semi-annual payments or even annual payments or perhaps even balloon payments because yeah yeah absolutely you know and that's the idea too with real estate we're buying mismanaged apartment buildings like the one you see behind me here and and we need to remove the the bad tenants we need to renovate the apartments we need to get move in uh, tenants and market rates we need to fix everything that's broken and this takes like two years to do and get it really up and running properly. And then we have to have a couple of years of good tax returns. So the bank sees that we're making money and collecting rents and paying our debts. And then we can go ahead and refinance and get that big lump sum of capital into our investors' pockets. But that'll take four years to get there. Okay. So if you're sitting there with your money in your checking account and you're thinking you got to double it by you know the end of the year, then you're really not going to do that with a real estate syndicate. You, you know, you're going to need about a four to five year period to like yeah, or, or a home equity line of credit that you need to be paying on, paying down mm-hmm. every single mm-hmm. month. That that can be a little bit stressful as well. Yeah. Okay, great, great stuff. We we I think I get the gist of it now, Aaron. Now, I know you've got a whole presentation on how you explain this to a prospective investor. Can you give us kind of the Coles Notes version of how would you explain the concept of a self-directed IRA to a potential investor? Sure. So it's quite simple. Your IRA is your money. Uh, You've decided to let the government hold on to it for the next how many years until you're 59 and a half or so and can start pulling it out. But you're allowed to do what you need to do with that money as long as it's within the rules of the IRA and the IRA custodian will guide you there. So the first step is um, determining, um, you know, what do you want to do with your IRA? Where, where's your passion? You know, do you have a passion for real estate? You know, a lot of my investors like being able to drive by buildings and tell their wife, Hey, I own that building. I own a part of that building. Tell your friends. Yeah. I just invested in a $5 million building in Newark, New Jersey. We're, we're building up Newark, you know, we're bringing it back. 
People yeah. love that. It's a lot more fun than buying an index fund. And what the heck do you own with an index fund, really? You know. So, at the end of the day, um, the idea is to see a tangible effect with your IRA, diversify into something that's going to produce a, a consistent income and be backed by solid assets. So, real estate's a tried and true asset for that. So, that the first thing you do is you select an IRA custodian. You have to work with an IRA custodian. Um, and, uh, just, uh, so maybe you let's say your IRA is with fidelity. Okay. So you're going to select an IRA custodian. Let's say you select next generation trust. Okay. There's fit, over 50 of them out there. You want to pick the right one for you. Now, you, so your IRA custodian, next generation trust is going to contact fidelity. They're going to say, okay, we've engaged with this client. They've signed the forms and they've asked to move uh, $50,000 of the IRA over to next generation trust. Okay. Uh, so Fidelity can't do anything about that. This is your IRA. You're allowed to do this. And Fidelity is then going to send that $50,000 over to next generation. Are they going to kick and scream a little bit about it? They're going to kick and scream. Your financial advisor is going to tell you, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You hired me to invest your money. You're a fool. You know, do you cut your own hair? They'll say, <laughs> they'll say things. I know your financial. <laughs> if he does say that, you should take all your money out because he's yeah. a jerk. But right. No, but you know, the bottom line is you're not cutting your own hair. You're investing with a, ideally a real estate syndicate. Well, you can go, you know, do a flip, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So you're going to hire that IRA custodian. They're going to call Fidelity. The 50,000 is going to be moved over to your new IRA custodian, Next Generation Trust. All right, great. Now it's sitting there. Now it's not doing anything. Next Generation Trust does not give you any returns. They are, they're not a fund. Okay. They're a custodian. They're a middleman. All right. And at this point, you're going to say, okay, I've uh, done my research on People's Capital Group. I went to their website. I read all their blogs and their podcasts. I talked to their references. They have a good track record. I like the deal they're putting out there. I want to invest in this apartment building. Okay, great. You're going to contact People's Capital Group, get qualified. We're going to send over our documentation to your custodian, operating agreement, offering memorandum, membership certificate, IRA docs, I mean, the, the LLC docs, the formation, the EIN. All right, so your IRA custodian is going to review all this information. You want to work with the real estate operator who knows what the custodians are looking for, okay? Because it's a big waste of everyone's time. If I say in my operating agreement, the IRA is on the hook for the mortgage, right? And I send that operating agreement to the custodian, that's a no-go. An IRA can't be on a hook for a mortgage because there's a limited amount of funds. It cannot take on debt, all right? An IRA... That's a different presentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But essentially, right, so you want to work with operators that know what the IRA custodians are looking for, make it nice and pain-free when you're, when you're moving your capital into that asset. And that's what we do here. We know what the IRA custodians are looking for. We've structured funds that are IRA friendly. All right. So that's it. So the IRA custodian is going to review your information. They're going to say, okay, this operation checks out. They're going to sign the off, uh, they're going to sign the operating agreement. Uh, you'll probably sign red and agreed. Okay. You're also going to review the operating agreement. And then at that point, they're going to wire the funds to the attorney doing the closing. We'll close on the real estate. And the cash flow checks will be sent back to your IRA custodian. Uh, every quarter, the uh, updates and the financials are going to be sent to you. So you can keep track of your investment and you can get your financials and all that. But they're also going to be the K-1 tax forms are actually going to be sent to your IRA custodian and filed under your IRA custodian's EIN, without getting into the nitty gritty here. Right. Um, so essentially, your, your IRA custodian is going to get those cash flow checks. They're going to get the lump sum upon the refinance, and that's going to build your IRA faster. Okay. It's not a way to pull from it early. It's not a way to beat the tax man and, and trick everyone and, and pay for your kid's college education. You know, you, you can't take your spouse out to dinner. You, you can't buy a vacation property down the shore, take your family there for free every two, you know, two weeks a year. Um, so there's limitations. All right. Um, you cannot, you know, you can generally invest with uh, family members that are um, horizontal on the planet. Like you can invest with your brother in that tech idea. He's always been nagging you about. That's fine. Yeah. You cannot invest in your son's, you know, uh, new uh, tech idea. OK, uh, that's so th your IRA custodian will guide you there and they right. will either approve or disapprove the investment. All right. Very interesting. So to me, it sounds like there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity here, both on the side of us as real estate entrepreneurs, as, as another source of untapped capital. Mm -hmm. And then there's all, it's a win-win because there's a, 
a massive upside for your investors as well, because this is a way for them to take their IRA money out of paper assets, just purely paper assets and, mm-hmm. and invest them in something solid and tangible bricks and sticks, right? So an actual real estate deal and exactly. get much, much higher returns than they're accustomed to without yeah. without all the fees and crap that the financial planners are charging. Yeah. I mean, heck, you could even start an LLC that's owned by your IRA, but managed by you. And you can't pay yourself like a management fee or anything like that. But you could go, let's say you have $100,000. You're going to take 50. You're going to go flip a property, get your hands dirty. You always wanted to fix up a property, make that dream come true. You can take the other 50 and invest in a syndicate with professionals and just make sure your IRA doesn't get completely lost. And uh, that way, uh, you know, that's a good way to diversify as well. But either way, all of the profits have to go back into the IRA, correct? All the profits have to go back. In that case, you'd have an LLC account, which all the profits have to go back into. Now, in this situation where you start the self-directed IRA LLC, also known as a checkbook IRA LLC account, is the nickname for it, um, you're really policing yourself. So I don't advise this if you're not going to do very active things with the capital. If you're just investing in a syndicate, you're moving the capital once into the syndicate and we're sending pieces back as the property cash flows and makes profit. So if you're flipping a house, you need to pay your contractor and your plumber, you know, that day, you know, so you need access to the money quickly, then you might want to consider starting that LLC that's owned by your IRA and managed by you. But keep in mind, some IRA custodians won't even allow you to do that. So, you know, talk to your IRA custodian. Uh, I also know consultants that can kind of consult people on how to find the right IRA custodian. Oh, I think it's like 15 cool. bucks and they'll like kind of guide you. It's probably wow. the best 15 bucks you ever spend, you know. That's yeah, that's a that's a valuable service, that's for sure. Aaron, time flies when we're having fun, my friend. So if people want to find out more about you, if they want to maybe take a look at the presentation you've done around your own self-directed IRA type thing, what should they do? So peoplescapitalgroup.com is our website, and we have uh, recorded webinars there of the how to self-direct your IRA, and we have over 50 podcast episodes and you can apply to qualify there and get on our list as a qualified investor. And um, we've news about 10 years. So we have a lot of content there, a lot of information. And uh, we focus on North Jersey and Southern Vermont. And we have a new offering coming out actually in a couple of weeks. So that's peoplescapitalgroup.com. Awesome. Very good. Aaron, thank you very much. This has been fascinating. Thanks, Dave. Have a good day, my friend. You too. All right, everybody. Take care and see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Well, hey there, thanks for tuning into the Property Profits Podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, Investor attractionbook.com. Take care.